This is like good winter food, right? It smells incredible coming downstairs. <laughs> the smell is amazing. This is so good. I mean, this is not me too to make hard. This is Julia. Oh my God. It's the kind of dinner that makes me feel like I should have read a paper, a printed newspaper, the Boston Globe, before eating it. Right. And then I should maybe take up pipe smoking <laughs> and be sitting in a big overstuffed armchair. <laughs> this or is this is the best beef, best beef stew I've ever had. This is extraordinary. It also feels like it maybe calls for some dinner rolls to go with it. I think that would be my part of this dinner scenario, mm. would be making some nice, freshly baked dinner roll. This is a buff bourguignon, big chunks of beef simmered with a rich winey sauce with onions and mushrooms. It's really, it's one of the best beef stews you ever put in your mouth. We're doing beef in red wine today on The French Chef. Hi, I'm Amy Traverso, Senior Food Editor at Yankee Magazine and co-host of Weekends with Yankee. And I'm so glad to be back with you for this month's edition of You and Julia at Home. So like all of you, I am spending a lot of time at home in my kitchen. And right now my favorite kitchen companion remains Julia. So today I wanted to visit one of her classic iconic recipes, which is beef in red wine sauce, also known as beef bourguignon. And it's perfect for this time of year because it's the ultimate cozy comfort weekend dish. As always, I am cooking with my mom's original edition of Mastering Your French Cooking. It's being held together with a little bit of tape, but that just shows how, how beloved it is. Okay, so the centerpiece of this recipe, as the name implies, is beef. Um, it's beef bourguignon, and you need about three pounds of it. The first step here is to brown some bacon and then cook our meat in the fat that we render from the bacon. So this is pork belly. I don't need to do that step of blanching the meat. But again, if you want to use bacon, that's fine. And I'm going to use two pans here. I'm going to cook it in two pans because I want to be able to cook my beef more quickly. And there's so much of it and you need to cook it in batches. So having two, uh, two pans going at the same time will save you a lot of time. The fresh bacon is rather hard to get. The unsmoked bacon is rather hard to get in this country. So you can use a pork belly. I mean a pork butt like this, which is fat and lean. Just saute it very, very lightly so that it will render its fat. And then when you, we finally get to the meat, you're going to use the fat to brown the meat in. OK, I feel good about my bacon or my pork belly. So I'm going to remove it now. I'm going to leave that fat in there. Turn the heat down to medium so the fat doesn't burn. But what we're really interested in is the beef, and we want stewing beef. And that means beef from the part of the animal that has the most exercise. And we're going to concentrate on the shoulder blade, because you can get some delicious stewing cuts from the shoulder blade. And so if you don't know exactly what to ask for and you want some shoulder blade, just ring the little bell and say very politely, Sir, I want that piece of tender that lies along the shoulder blade, or I want some of the meat that's down along the ribs. Julia was a little more, um, a little more particular about what kind of beef she wanted to use. For convenience's sake, I just want to use the beef that I can get at the supermarket that's already pre-cut. Julia does not season her meat before she cooks it. I, I can't bear to not season my meat before I cook it. I like adding flavor at every stage of the cooking process. So I'm adding salt and pepper to my beef. And then I'm going to just toss it a little bit and put this with room in between in my pan. And another thing is that you want to be sure and not crowd your pan. So you can see my pan was already pretty hot from cooking the uh, pork belly. So I'm getting some browning on some of the pieces. You keep turning it. You want it to be very nicely browned on both sides, but not black. So you have to stand right over it practically. This is the weekend meal. Or it's the quarantine meal any day of the week because they all blur together. Okay. 
I'm feeling good about my brownie. I know that I've got a good amount of flavor going on in my pan. So now I'm going to combine the two into my larger Dutch oven, which is where most of the cook rest of the cooking is going to happen. And I want to get everything in there, the fat and the meat. About a couple tablespoons of flour here. And I'm going to sprinkle it over the meat. Now at this point, Julie would put it in a 400 degree oven. I'm gonna just cook it on the stove top because to me it's a little bit simpler. So you can see this is just a beautiful dark brown. That's what you want. So this meat is now going to go into a bowl and I'm gonna use the same pan to cook my vegetables in that same fat and flavor and salt and all the good stuff. And now I'm going to cook one white onion, which I've sliced, and some carrots. It's one large carrot, two medium carrots. If you want more carrots, put more carrots in there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil because I want to kind of lubricate the onions. And this will also prevent the bottom from browning. I'm going to add some liquid to just do something called deglazing. But it doesn't have to be expensive. I've got like a $12 bottle of wine here. And to deglaze, it just means simply putting in liquid. In this case, I want to put in red wine. And now I can add all my other ingredients now that I know I've done a good job with the box. So we're going to add some garlic. I did three cloves. I think Julia does two cloves. I love garlic, so I went a little farther with that. Uh, some tomato paste, about a tablespoon. Some dried thyme. It's funny. It's Often hard to find a, a, a good time uh, to use dried herbs. Um, they often sit in my drawer, but uh, actually these kinds of stews where they cook for a while, this is a good chance to use those dried herbs. I'm gonna use a bay leaf. And now I can return my meat back to the pan. So I've got my, my uh, pork belly or bacon, all that beef. And I wanna put all the juices in there. Give it a good stir, and now I add liquid. So I'm gonna add the rest of my wine. You want to have quite a bit of red wine, probably for, say, if you were using three pounds of meat, you'd want about three cups of red wine. And use a good, good tasting young red wine, like a Mountain Red or a Beaujolais. I use this California Mountain Red, which I find very good both for cooking and for at the table. And then as much beef stock, as I need. This is store-bought. I didn't make it. You just want to cover the meat almost all the way. So it might be two cups, depending on uh, how much your beef is cooked down. And this is going to go in a 325 degree oven. Make sure there's enough liquid around it. If there isn't, add more wine or stock, depending on what you like and let it go until you can stick a fork in that meat and it's super, super tender. So that might be anywhere from two to three hours, depending. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the oven now. So the two other big ingredients in this dish are mushrooms and pearl onions. You're just cooking them basically in butter and a little bit of oil. So I'm gonna start with my mushrooms. I'm gonna give it a good like two to three tablespoons of butter and a little bit of olive oil. And as always, with mushrooms, you have to wait until the, until the fat is really hot in your pan. These are just going to have a very slight browning because it gives them more flavor. I'm just going to kind of swirl, swirl my pans, get that nice and melted. This pan's a little bit of a big swirl. I'm going to put my onions in, along with a nice sprig of thyme, maybe about that much. Mm, so good. And then I'm going to put my mushrooms in and I'm going to shake this so it doesn't. My onions are looking gorgeous. They are beautiful. They could enter a beauty pageant for onions. So they're really nicely brown. They're, they're brown, but they're not really cooked through and they need a little bit of liquid to do that. They want, we want to steam them now that we've browned them. So I'm adding a bit of stock to the pan. 
and it should bubble and sizzle because that's what we want. We want to create steam and then we're going to cover this pan and let these onions steam until they're cooked through. I'm getting some nice browning on my mushrooms now. Check on my onions. Okay, my onions are looking good. They're looking a little bit collapsed. And so now what I'm gonna do is take off the lid and just let this simmer so that we get a beautiful sauce in the pan. So we're very close to being done here. And as soon as the beef is cooked, our dish is ready to assemble. Okay, my beef has been cooking. It's beautiful, it's tender. The sauce is glossy and reduced and gorgeous. I've got my onions with their beautiful juices here and then I've got my mushrooms and I'm gonna let the thyme sprigs go in there people can always pick them out but they add flavor and I just really love the rustic brown beautiful look of this dish so I'm just gonna serve it up now and if you want more sauce you can always add a little bit more stock and you can spoon it into your bowl you can garnish it with a little shower parsley thanks so much for joining me today I hope you were able to cook along with me and if you were please take a picture of your dish and post it on social media with the tag at GBH and remember what Julia always said, there's no end to imagination in the kitchen.